that quick video on how I trim the drippy slippy mugs. So if you haven't encountered them before, the drippy slippy mugs are mugs that I throw, then I apply thick coloured marbled usually, so I put two or three colours of slip in a syringe, marble it down the outside and use that to stick the handle on. So what you've got is a handle stuck in slip and big thick slip, well relatively thick slip drips. You can make your slip as thick as you want but the thicker it is the more likely it will be to crack so these kind of flatten down as they dry and as the slip runs. So a couple of millimetres worth of thickness by the end. Um, I've got some fired ones over here but you can just see the kind of you can colour the slip however you want. So blue and white speckles and then using my dark clay with a turquoise for a kind of quite retro 70s sort of colour. Um, but the thing is that obviously the way that I do them with throwing it, leaving it on the bat, applying the slip, applying the handle, then wiring off, what you're left with is a mug with a handle and slip but without a trimmed bottom. Now I want to trim them as neatly as I would a normal mug but um, you've got a few kind of awkward bits because of this. So the first thing is to try and get the wall thickness right when you throw them and trim them while they're still on the bat. So I've done this one fairly well so there's like an extra couple of mil where it hits that bottom junction but the wall thickness down to there is about right and you need that to be the case because of that slip there. So you cannot trim basically anything other than rounding that edge without hitting the slip. So in the Giffen Grip, just using cheap old trimming tool, I do actually have recently bought a couple of the nicer with the Zeem loop tools, which are really nice. Uh, they're quite aggressive though. So this is a bit blunt, which actually I quite like when I'm not trimming off a lot of stuff and I'm being a bit more delicate because if a really sharp tool catches, uh, especially seeing as these are on the drier side, which obviously again, you have to be because you're gripping the slip. Um, so, if this was still soft, not only would you warp the top, but you'd distort the slip. So you've got to let them firm up possibly more than you would otherwise. Um, yeah, so you, the trick to these is being very delicate when trimming the outside and keep, make sure you don't ever get down far enough to hit the handle, but um, keep something I'm using my thumb here, just I can feel where that slip drip is and you want something to kind of act as a, a guide to make sure you don't clip it with the trimming tool because obviously that will take a chunk out of it and you can't put it back. You know, it's marbled slip, any damage you do will be quite obvious. So having done what little you can with that round edge, um, I check the thickness before I put it on, the base is pretty much where it needs to be and I've left a little bit more at the junction with the wall so I can trim essentially take off level to this point add a little more there but it's worth throwing them Again, basically as you want them, keep trimming to a minimum. Well, I do that with all my mugs anyway. You've seen any of my other trimming videos. So, once you've got rid of a small amount of material, what I do, oh, and I should say, the laser line you can see is just that. You can see it's hitting the center of the mug, which means I set it upright. Um, you wanna do that before you start trimming really and I'll show you why in a second but um, just in case you wonder what that was I will address it so I'm using a green mud tools so this is one of their firm ribs to burnish the clay and you can see it smooth and change colour um, 
that with a smooth clay will leave a smooth finish so you don't have to do much sanding at all when you've fired the piece on a groggy clay it won't work so well but these are Zeme ball tools this is the largest size I believe if not the largest then the second most large but they're great for what I've done there is to find uh, the inside of a foot so having trimmed down slightly I've now defined that and then what I do is I add a little ornamental swirl in the middle get a soft rib and just make sure that's smooth and now what I'm left with is a slightly flattened center slightly raised outer foot ring so it'll fire nicely and won't rock um, when it's finished everything's burnished I could actually take off a fraction more clay off that so I'll do that just feel a slight lip there again being very careful not to hit the slip so that is it trimmed without affecting the slip tool and then what you do is you line up bottom of the handle with the laser my logo stamp you can see it has um, some nice clearly defined center points which is useful in that I can line it up and um, not useful in that if I don't line it up it's quite obvious but what I do is I make sure the laser hits the line at the top at the bottom and then making sure to keep it in the same place I just rock it so it stamps on all sides and then you've got a stamp that lines up with the handle and I will now just set that aside under cover so it dries um, I put them in a plastic IKEA box I've got a video on my timings which I think I show the box off but just any kind of storage box will work for that um, and you keep the box sealed, I leave them on a wooden bat so the water doesn't pool at the bottom because that will soak back in and ruin the rim but yeah they just sit on that and then because the box is sealed they dry slightly and then dry very slowly after that you can vent the box just a very small amount um, and control the drying that way and it's quite handy if you're producing loads of mugs you can just keep them going through the process so I, I kind of move them through different boxes and different rates of drying until they're ready to go in the bisque. Um, those because they start drier than normal mugs will actually dry faster um, but you don't want to really dry them quickly because of the thickness of the slip and it will crack. Um, if it's going to crack it will probably crack anyway but you, you can definitely exacerbate it by drying them faster just because of the difference in the drying. But um, yeah, that's all there is to it. And then, as I say, the fired ones. Yeah, this is what that foot would look like fired. And then those, those, those ones are all in this slip. So I've got a video on that, but that's porcelain slip with uh, blue cobalt speckles in it, and then a cobalt blue slip. Uh, I think this one was actually a different clay, but I have now bothered to make a batch of the PF580, which I throw in. So I've got co cobalt blue clay that matches, and then the porcelain, which um, will be slightly more prone to crack because it's got higher shrinkage. But it, you can see how much whiter it is. So it's quite nice to, to have the blue speckles set against that rather than the slightly yellower uh, PF580.